Tracy. Tracy. My brother Gordon is seriously multi-talented. He can watch TV, listen to music and play a video game all at the same time. But his real talent is in the kitchen. Gordon can turn a sandwich into a work of art. Mmm, multi-decker ham, banana, peanut butter, chilli, cheese, strawberry jam, pickle, ice cream and hummus combo. My favourite. Yeah, Gordon is pretty special, all right. The only problem is he just can't wake up in the morning, which is not that popular with certain school principals. Late again, McBean. <sighs> yes, Mr Longbottom. Not good enough, McBean. No, Mr Longbottom. You've been late once too often. Next time, you're on suspension. Suspension! <laughs> yes, Mr Longbottom. Come on, Seamus. We don't want to be late. What for? The science club meeting, remember? Science club? Since when have you been interested in science club? What? You said so yourself. They're not interested in inventing. They're a bunch of stuck-up... I know what I said, but uh, things might have changed. What things? Just thing things. I couldn't tell Seamus, but one thing had changed, and his name was Laszlo Lambert. OK, everyone. Stand back. Laszlo was the president of the science club, and he was gorgeous. Now prepare to be amazed as it changes colour from red to blue. You're an ace, ah. Laszlo. Oh. Extremely average. Wasn't that amazing? Love that chemical reaction. You're so atomically gifted. Uh, yeah, I know you. You're that... Uh... Tammy McBride. Uh, no, it's Tracy McBean. Yeah, that's what I said. Scientist and inventor. Glad to be aboard. Aboard? Joining the club. Makes no sense to me, but hey, I'm only your best friend. So, uh, where do we sign? Uh, here's an application form. You can bring it back next year. Next year? When you're old enough to join. Sorry, no little kids allowed. What? Hi, littlies. See ya. Why don't you go do some colouring in or something? Littlies? Who does he think he's calling littlies? Well, they know what they can do with their science club, right, Tracy? What? Oh, oh, yeah. I'm gonna get my lunch. See you at the canteen. It was totally illogical. It made no sense. After the way Laszlo treated us, why did I still want to join the science club? Let's look at this sensibly. On the one hand, he's a science snob who wouldn't know an inventor if he fell over her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Settle down. So everyone agrees with me? My fabulous guest exchange chamber will be our entry in the inter-school science fair. On the other hand, he's dreamy and totally gorgeous, which is completely irrelevant and unscientific. This was extremely confusing. I was experiencing emotions I'd never felt before. Could I be falling for a boy? Ugh, no, get real. This was nothing to do with boys. This is a matter of principle. Think I'm too young to join their club, eh? Well, I'll show them some real science. You're kidding, Tracy. Why do you want to hang out with that bunch of losers? It's the principle, Seamus. If I can invent the ultimate uninventable thing, it'll prove we should be in their club. I get you. And as soon as they let us join, we tell them to stick it up their jumpers and resign on the spot. Yes. Yeah. Sort of, maybe. We'll teach that, Laszlo. Laszlo. It's got to be something they reckon could never be done. But what? The principal said if I'm late again, he'll put me on suspension. Oh, Gordon, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. I think I need some lunch and dessert to cheer me up. Hmm. Gordon. That's it. Seamus, to the caravan. Think about it, Seamus. What's the most impossible thing you could ever invent? A cheese sandwich where the edges don't curl up in the sun? Easy. More impossible than that. A tissue that doesn't get soggy when you sneeze? Open your mind, Seamus. Think the unthinkable. Believe the unbelievable. You don't mean... You couldn't. That's more than impossible. It's impossible squared. Not anymore. <gasps> Is 
Is that what I think it is? You bet. An invention to get Gordon to school on time. The hardest part of getting Gordon to school was to get him out of bed. That's when it hit me. I'd invent a bed to drive him to school and get him ready on the way. The Gordon Get Ready bed would be the jewel in my inventing crown. Automated breakfast dispenser featuring a choice of cereals and juice, gravity feed shower and solar powered scrubbers and toothbrush for that all over off to school shine, and an auto sensor wardrobe selector. Just key in your choice of fashion style and weather forecast and the bed will do the rest. On time at last, McBean. Well done. Yes, Mr Longbottom. Uh, hey, what's all this? Hi, Laszlo. Macbeth. McBean. Yeah, that's what I said. Think we're good enough for your science club now? Mm, not bad. Oh, maybe we could stretch it to a junior associate membership. Ha! Got you where we want you. We've only got one thing to say to you, Mr Science Club Big Shot. Right, Tracy? Yeah. Thanks, Laszlo. We'd love to join. Huh? But weren't we going to resign from the club? Wasn't that the plan? Well, yes, sort of. But they're really not so bad. They've made us junior associate members. Gordon's new bed was a big hit. In no time flat, he was the talk of the town. Morning, Gordon. Love those cornflakes. <laughs> Hope you brought an umbrella, Gordon. Looks like rain today. Hey, Gordon, I'm out of lift. Yeah, things couldn't have been better. Gordon wasn't worried about being suspended anymore. And Laszlo had started talking to me. I don't understand. What's gone wrong? It's stopped working. That's what's wrong. Looks like we don't have an entry for the science fair anymore. But we have to enter something. The reputation of the science club's on the line. But what? I think I've just found it. Uh, congratulations, Junior Associates. After much consideration, you've been made full members. <gasps> Seamus, did you hear that? Which entitles us to enter Gordon's bed in the science fair? Now, of course, you realise any trophy won becomes the property of the science club, and as president of the science club, it will uh, have my name on it. What? And uh, your invention will tour the country as part of the science fair exhibition. But... Please, 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 no public displays of gratitude. I don't want to wrinkle my lab coat. <laughs> you can touch it, though, if you want. It's 100% polyester, and it's fire-resistant. Isn't it wonderful, Seamus? My invention in the science fair! You can't send Gordon's bed around the country. Why not? Because Gordon will be in it. So? If he's on tour, he won't be at school. And if he's not at school, he'll get suspended. Oh. That night, I couldn't sleep. I thought the science club was the most important thing in the world. But Gordon was my brother, and I couldn't get him suspended. I know. I'll have a word with Laszlo. He'll understand. No way, McBannister. Impossible. Absolutely not. But Gordon can't go on a national tour. He'll miss school. He'll get suspended. Well, I'm sorry. But it's a small price to pay for a great advance in science. And let's face it, there's no smaller sacrifice than Gordon. But his... Remember, you're science club now. And us science clubbers stick together. You've been right all along, Seamus. What can I say? I know. Well, no one treats my brother like this. Except you, sometimes. Yes, but that's only because I have to live with him. Fair enough. So what are you going to do? What a girl has to do. So, the next day at the science fair... Invention number 14, Gordon's get ready bed. It's five past nine. Where is he? Probably held up at the traffic lights. Can we have invention number 14, please? Ah, here he comes. Oh, it's about time. Late again, McBean. Not good enough, not good enough by a long shot. You're on suspension. <gasps> I was told this bread would deliver a boy ready for school. Ah, uh, yes, miss, it should have. But uh, I think we've been sabotaged. Nonsense. Sounds like excuses to me. Marks, please. But where is Gordon? Seamus? Breakfast! 
Gordon McBean? And he's been here for an hour, so he's not late at all. You just said he had to be at school on time, not awake and on time. I suppose I did. Well, well done, McBean. This is all your fault. How can you call yourself a scientist? I don't. I call myself a McBean! That's it! You're out of the science club. Too late. We already quit. Yeah, bye. Come to think of it, maybe Laszlo wasn't so hunky after all. Besides, who cares what people look like? Take my brother Gordon. He's a TV-watching, sandwich-eating, music-listening, game-playing legend. Only problem is he can't get up in the morning. So what? No one's perfect. No one knew where the rumour started. But by Friday afternoon, every kid in the school had heard Cosmic Dancing Dolls, Seamus' totally favourite band in the entire universe, are the secret act at tomorrow's concert in the park. It'll be awesome. It'll be legendary. It'll be... What's wrong? I'm not going. But you have to. You're the doll's biggest fan. You love the dolls more than lunch itself. I'm going to a family reunion. <laughs> a family reunion? Yeah, good one, Seamus. You're going to it. You're serious? You are going to a family reunion. It's the annual get-together. The Wongs and the O'Tools. I've got no choice. I have to go. Poor Seamus. What a tragedy. A kid might never recover from a shock like this. It could stay with him for weeks. If only I could be in two places at once. But that's impossible. Impossible? Nothing's impossible. Just a bit tricky, that's all. Mm, they split the atom. Let's see if we can find a way to split Seamus. Tracy, are you sure about this? Relax, Seamus. The simple solutions are often the best. Ready? Say cheese. Parmesan. Perfect. Perfect? Just sneak this into the reunion and no one will know the difference. Honestly, Seamus, your family has such a good time at parties, they'll never suspect that you are not really you. I don't know, Tracy. I just don't reckon they'll fall for it. But it's exactly like you. Sort of. Sorry, Tracy, but thanks for trying. Hmm, Seamus is right. The double has to be more lifelike. It has to be Seamus. I needed some high-tech equipment. It's surprising what you can find lying around the average family home. Need to borrow this. Sorry. Mom! Tracy stole my computer! Make yourself another sandwich, dear. Oh, uh, OK. There. Everything I need to make a multi-dimensional holographic Seamus copying machine. Hmm, I just have to work out how to put it all together. Even though I had the feeling that Seamus wasn't totally committed to this project, I was certain he'd be thrilled with the end result. Nearly there, Seamus. <laughs> For a moment, I dreamt I was standing in my underwear with a walk on my head. <laughs> I've recreated your entire three-dimensional image on the computer hard drive. Oh. But don't thank me yet. OK, Seamus, cross your fingers and everything else you've got. First I hit copy, then I hit print. Ah! Seamus! Seamus! That was great. Seamus, I haven't plugged it in yet. This was big. I hope I know what I'm doing. I did it! It worked! A perfect virtual Seamus! It's me! It's really me! Oh, hi, Seamus. Hi, Seamus. Looking good, Seamus. You too, Seamus. Tracy, you're a genius. I'll be at the concert and the reunion both at the same time. High five, Seamus. You got it, Seamus. Seamus, no! It's not solid yet! It's still a hologram! Uh oh Tracy, what's happening to me? What's happening to you? What's happening to me? It doesn't matter what sort of party you have. Someone always goes too far. I'm sorry, Seamus. I tried to warn you. One second I was there. 
next second, kaboom! Poor Seamus. He was shattered. It's not every day you see yourself blown to bits. <laughs> I want me! Give me back myself! It's okay, Seamus. You never felt a thing. You really should get some warm clothes on. You're gonna catch a cold. I'm all right. I never catch cold. <laughs> what was that? It sounded like an echo. Several echoes. An echo! An echo! An echo. An echo. Like an echo. <laughs> Why are you guys laughing at me? It's me! They're me! They're all you, Seamus! <laughs> Dozens of you! This was sensational! Success beyond my wildest dreams! <laughs> Poor little me's! I'm freezing! They're freezing! We're freezing! Freezing! Well, then, you all need to get some clothes on. Now, don't any of you move. Promise? We promise. Whoa! <laughs> Normally, I don't like borrowing Megan's stuff, but this was an emergency. Besides, she couldn't really like those clothes. Baby Pink is so yuck. Shh! And you should get some clothes on. I know, but you didn't give me time. We've got enough. Come on. I've always wanted a battle suit like that. No! Whatever you do, Seamus, don't sneeze. <laughs> oh, who's there? Uh, no one, Megan. It's just a dream. Oh, good. I love my sister, especially when she's asleep. I think they'll like these clothes. Well, provided their fashion sense is as undeveloped as yours, Seamus, they'll love them. Hey, Seamuses, who wants to be Action Dan Kung Fu Man? <gasps> They're gone! But they can't have! Where could they possibly go? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Morris. <laughs> Cannibal. Morris had the biggest stomach of any cat I knew. A hundred mini Seamuses would just be play lunch for him. Not there. But where? Hey, Seamus. Yes, yeah, Seamus. Check it out. Cool. Hey, Seamuses. Roll a bladey cat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking up something. Quick, you check upstairs, I'll check down. I'll never forgive myself if anything happens to me. Don't worry, little me's, I'm coming! Uh, 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 nearly there. Watch it! Ah, get off! from the kitchen. Cereal a bit off today, huh? Thanks! Tracy, quick! <laughs> this is too much. Now they're joyriding on stolen chickens. We're trying to put Seamus together again. Range. Three metres and closing. Bearing. Straight ahead. Steady as she goes. And <laughs> vacuum. <laughs> we have to move fast, Tracy, before they take over the entire neighbourhood. It took us all day, but eventually we sucked them all back into captivity. That's what I call a job well done, Seamus. Are you positive? I'm sure there was one more. Don't worry, Mrs. Buckingham. It's just me. Finding the clones was the easy part. Now for the tricky bit. The world is a very big place. Very, very big. big. I'm flat out being one of me. I could never take care of all of you me's too. Never. So, here's the deal. 
I'm going to make you big like Seamus. So this Seamus here can go to the concert and you, the new Seamus, can go to a party. What do you say? Big like Seamus? Party like Seamus? It's a deal! OK, guys, here comes your big moment. <laughs> OK. okay. See you, little Seamuses. It was simple, really. I just had to adjust the cloning program from multiplication to addition. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, where have they gone? They can't just disappear. It's not logical. It, it's not scientific. It's not right. <laughs> Seamus, look! Wow, they've gone into cyberspace. Unreal! Seamus missed his little Seamuses, but things didn't turn out too bad. When his cousins heard Seamus' favourite band was playing, they decided to hold the reunion at the concert. So Seamus got to see the show after all. Well, some of the show. It was fun having lots of Seamuses, but I think one of anybody is really enough. I mean, imagine having two of me! My dog Sandy is the best dog ever. He's loyal, he's faithful. No, Sandy, don't chase the cat. But he never does anything I say. What's that noise? <gasps> Again, Tracy. Mum and Dad said I had to give Sandy some obedience lessons, or someone would be in big trouble. How will this invention help you train Sandy? Well, the problem here is one of deliberate dog disobedience. With a human to hound training transmitter, Sandy will be oh. under my complete control. <laughs> What's that? A baby? a baby? What are you doing with baby Rocky? Tracy, do something. He won't stop crying. Mm, did you think of feeding him? Yes, I gave him pizza. <laughs> See? All you had to do was pick Rocky up. All he wanted was a cuddle. I'll handle it from here. Babysitting expert at work. I know what to do with babies. I don't know what to do with babies! It was time to test my invention and let Sandy know that I was law in this town. Sit, boy. Sit. Oh. Fetch, boy. <laughs> Fooling around, Seamus. This is a serious scientific experiment. <laughs> Stay, boy. Stay. Oh. What's wrong, Seamus? Get a grip of yourself. <laughs> Very funny. Go on, laugh. <laughs> hmm. Jump, Seamus. Hey. One leg. No legs. What happened? Why am I sitting on the ground? Seamus, we haven't invented a hound training transmitter. What is it? A human mind control device. A mind control machine? OK, little lucky. Time to find out who's boss. Hmm. Milk, ice cream. Yeah. Tracy! Tracy! Come quick. What? Mum wants you to go and buy milk. And a few other little things. Oh, I'm on the verge of a great discovery. After today, the world will never be the same. History will be made. Do you want to face the judgment of history? Or oh, an angry mum? History can wait. Mum won't. So, what invention is that? It's a none-of-your-business invention. Locked? I don't know why Tracy never trusts me. I'll break in. Baby, stop crying. Baby, bounce. 
baby. Quack like a ducky. Sweet as a nut. Megan, bring a tub of ice cream and a spoon to feed me with. I can make anyone do anything I want. <laughs> but that would be wrong. If I let go too far, I could control the whole world. The whole world. Under my control. Nothing could stop me. <laughs> oh. Do you believe this? I'm in the middle of a major scientific breakthrough, and I have to buy margarine. And milk, and bread, and detergent, and that stuff that stops your sneakers stinking. What's this? What's that? Jim? Jake? Who dares enter the inner sanctum of Gordonopia? Yes, stay away from my inner sanctum. What's Gordonopia? It's the land ruled by King Gordon, and we are Gordonites. We are the Gordonites. King, King Gordon? Gordon? Mightiest of them all, wise beyond his years, conquer of all the seas. He has a winning smile, too. Gordon, Gordon is, is wise. wise. Gordon, Gordon is great. Gordon has a winning smile. King Gordon? What's going on? And where's the mind control machine? Something tells me one question answers the other. Ugh. King Gordon commands us to bring you before him. So we better do it, because he gets really upset if we don't do what he says. He's so demanding. Now, of all the kings I've worked for, he's probably the most difficult. We found these peasants outside. You've done well, Mike. Groveling, sniveling, smelly, filthy little guards. Be gone. Okay, Gordon, what do you think you're doing with my invention? Really, and forsooth, my liege, I have done your maths homework. I will now start your chemistry assignment. Pretty and forsooth you too, Mrs. Comedy. Oh, adorn me not with your words of praise. Two, now be gone, Speck. Gordon, take off my invention and stop this right now. In a foul dream, thou knavish barnacle. Mum, Dad! Okay, Gordon. You're really going to get it now. Hail, O oh great and noble son! Not you too. We have scoured the realm, and here are the comics you wished for. King Gordon. Ace and cool. Gordon, don't you see? You've let the power of my invention go to your head. You've got to stop. Ha-ha! <laughs> I'm hungriest. Seamus, this is our chance to get out. You will not escape the mighty King Gordon, for I am in need of justice. Ha-ha! <laughs> Amuse me, Jester. <laughs> dance, fool, dance. <laughs> what was I going to do? Uh, I couldn't go back home. I had to get help. But where? And from who? Gordon had taken over my home. Soon it will be the street. Gordon is wise. Gordon is great. Gordon has a winning smile. I was in a Gordon world. <gasps> it was Gordon Opia. Sandy! Oh, at least I have one friend that won't fall under Gordon's power. Sandy, will you do something for me? Just one time. One bark for no, two for yes. Ruff, ruff, ruff. I'll take that as a maybe. This king stuff's getting boring. If... Onwards to the ice cream shop. We must taste the ice cream first to see if it's worthy of King Gordon. Yeah, I want to have a lick too. No way. I don't want you licking my ice cream. If... The king is bored. If... The king wishes to play a computer game. Prithee, oh great and smiling Gordon, let this unworthy worm play it for you. If well, someone could tell me a joke, then I could do with a laugh. We would not dare your Gordonness for fear that you would find it unfunny. You know what to do, Sandy. <laughs> Sandy, I command you to stop. <gasps> it doesn't work on dogs. Gordonites, 
Seize the unruly, unkempt beast. Do you have any idea what you've done? OK. I confess I let it all go a little bit too far. Oh, a little bit? You were going to take over the world? And you made everyone say you had a winning smile. Me too. Well, that was good. I mean, that was bad. Very bad. <laughs> what a turkey. Look at him. Yeah, yeah. yeah what a turkey. Yeah, you're a, yeah. You, you're a turkey. What? You've got a saucepan on your head. <laughs> A oh, good, nice one. Oh, You've got a saucepan on your head as well. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> We've got to destroy this machine. It's too dangerous. Oh, I'm sorry. I only wanted a way to stop Lockie crying. Maybe you should try doing what he wants instead of making him do what you want. Ah, oh, Mahatma Gandhi. Seamus was right. The machine had to go. But Gordon still had his babysitting job to finish. Lockie only cried because he wanted Gordon to play with him. Now Lockie couldn't be happier. We'll get rid of the machine, all right, after Lockie's mum picks him up. Seamus and I had a mystery on our hands, the case of the hungry homework hound. <laughs> Mrs. Carmody will believe a dog ate my homework three days in a row. What was this beast? Was it real? Or a phantom flea bag from the kennel of hell? No matter how many of us there were, or how safe everything seemed, the homework hound was never deterred. Not only did the hound scare us, it laughed at us. Because the next day at school, the homework would be piled up at the front gate. That's a seriously weird dog, Tracy. You said it, Seamus. The only kids handing in their homework in one piece were the McConnelly brothers. Superb work, boys. The perfect score. A hundred out of a hundred. Thank you, Mrs. Carmody. Of course, we were all suspicious of them, but we could never prove they did anything wrong. We just had to sit there and take it. As for everyone else, zero, zero, zero. The mystery of the hungry homework hound just had to be solved, and I was determined to solve it. Are you sure this is going to work, Tracy? When did I ever let you down, Seamus? Well... OK, don't answer that. Look, the point is, it's just got to work. The dog detection device, phase one. The lights and noise will give the dog a quick fright. That will make the dog run back to where it comes from. Phase two, as the dog runs off, the machine will plant a tracking beacon. We'll then follow the dog and get to the bottom of the mystery. Hi, what you doing? That's my toy keyboard. I want it back. But you said I could borrow it. I changed my mind. <sighs> All right, what do you want? I want to play with this machine. This isn't a toy. It's a highly sensitive invention. If misused, catastrophe could occur. Is that bad? It's the worst. Well, what would happen? What would happen? Well, uh, it... It could make you invisible. <gasps> invisible? That's right. Uh, yeah, that's right. Prove it. Prove it. Sure. OK, Seamus, let's prove it. Sure. See that chair there? What chair? Exactly. It's invisible. Wow. The question is, what are we going to do with you now you know our top secret work? I won't tell anyone. I won't. Well, it's your lucky day. We'll let you go. Next time you walk in without being invited, you won't be so lucky. Ha-ha, <laughs> you're brilliant, Shane.
famous. It'll be a long, long time before Megan walks back into my caravan. OK, I was wrong. It didn't take long at all. We had scared Megan, but we'd also made her curious. How do I make something invisible? Somebody's touched my invention. They won't get far. <laughs> you? It was you who touched my invention. No, no, I never... Tracy, could we have a little talk? Oh, no. Not one of Mum and Dad's little talks. Tracy, 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 how, Tracy, how, how many times... Mum and Dad laid down the road rules to me. I just had to keep nodding until they finished. It was Megan's fault and I was getting the blame. It happens all the time and I was sick of it. And, and we, we don't, don't want, want to have, have this little talk, talk again. again. Good, Good night. She wanted to turn something invisible. I'm going to make that something someone. Her. I couldn't really make Megan invisible, but I could make her disappear. Sometimes you've got to be cruel to be kind. I was going to erase Megan. She was on her way to becoming a non-sister. Every morning, Princess Megan admires herself in the bathroom mirror as she brushes her hair. Sorry, Princess. It won't happen tomorrow morning. Huh? Tracy! Everything's working to plan. What did I do? Why can't I see me? I asked you a question! Did the machine make me invisible? Tracy? Tracy? Gordon, you can see me, can't you? Good old Gordon. Give him food and a comic book and the rest of the world doesn't exist. Late! Gotta go! Can't stop! Bye, dears! Mum? Dad? I can see me! I am invisible. It worked perfectly. It'd be a long, long time before my little sister dared to touch one of my inventions again. No one can see or hear me. No one can see or hear me. No one can see or hear me? I, I could do anything and no one would know. What a great idea. I had taken care of Megan, so Seamus and I were back to the important stuff. The hungry homework hound. We'll use his homework as bait to lure the hound to the machine. Oh! <laughs> you can't see me! You can't see me! You said she'd be better now. Oh, she should be! We have to go after her before she gets into trouble. I guess so. Once again, I'd underestimated just how sneaky and annoying little sisters are. You're big! That, and that, I that, don't that, like you. That, 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 that little girl just picked on me, Jake. Yeah, I don't like that. Uh, this is not right. It was remarkably unusual behaviour from one so young. She clearly is ignorant of your sensitive and fragile nature, Jim. What? You can't see me. <laughs> You can't see me. Maybe it's like how dogs can hear sounds people can't. Maybe they can see things we can't. Come on, come here. Here, here boy. boy. Come on. Quick, here oh, 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 boy. What? No homework? Claw. Oh. oh. I guess he's having an off day. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, let's go home and cop it anyway. What the heck? Yeah. So it's McConnelly's dog. Why would Megan come to school? I wouldn't have I thought I was invisible. I know her. She won't miss the chance to be the first invisible kid in history. In history? Well, I've never seen one before, have you? No, but you can't see them, therefore you can't see them. So how would you know? Let's not overcomplicate this, Seamus. Tracy, Seamus, you're late and assembly has already started. But Mrs Carmody... Quickly, quickly! 
We didn't have to wait long before our worst fears were confirmed. Now, children, please give me your full attention. <gasps> oh, no! There she is! Today, I've got a very big surprise for you. Today, I'm going to announce the winner of our Let's Be Cool and Groovy Blackboard Monitor competition. <gasps> <laughs> Tracy McBean, my office now! <laughs> you too, Megan McBean! Well, you can't see or hear me! Unfortunately for all of us, I most certainly can! Oh, I'm not invisible anymore. I told the principal how I taught Megan a lesson by making her think she was invisible. It confused the principal so much that we didn't get into trouble. Not this time, anyway. I knew I was never invisible. Sure you did. Anyway, I know something you really want to know. What? I know who the hungry homework hound is. It was Claw, the McConnelly's dog. It was all a McConnelly scheme to copy other people's homework. Here you go, Claw. We started to feed Claw false homework with lots of wrong answers. The McConnelly brothers just copied everything without even reading it. Do you think we should read it, Jay? No, no. Not even a bit? No, who cares? OK. <laughs> I don't understand, boys. You were doing so well. What happened? Zero! That's... That means that claw go... I mean... Jim and Jake soon gave up their homework hijacking. The mystery of the hungry homework hound was solved. But I still had the dog detection device. I made some modifications. What are you doing? I could track Megan and know exactly when she was coming to annoy me. Hold it. This indicates she's still here. Oh! Now how did Megan put it on me? Save me from little sisters! 